The one thing I always tell every single patient that comes in here, the best way to tighten skin is to remove it, mm -hmm. okay? Today we've got kind of an interesting one. It's a newer trend and I'd like to call it skin deep. We're gonna explore laser and microneedling treatments for the body toning. And so, you know, we've done this for the face. But now there is a new trend where everyone is starting to use some of these modalities on the body. Because listen, as plastic surgeons, we see there are common areas that are sun exposed, which are generally, you know, the neck, the chest, face, and hands. And those have been, you know, big topics that we've talked about before. But now it's the body, tightening the body. And so when we come up with some of these new options, not everybody's ready for body lifts and you know cutting out uh, excess skin, but they do want to look firmer. Here in California, it's warm all the time, but uh, in certain areas, it's, uh, it's warmer for a portion of the year, we want to look our best. And you know, before we get into how we can do it non-invasively, the one thing I always tell every single patient that comes in here, the best way to tighten skin is to remove it, mm -hmm. okay? So there are limitations as to how much skin can be tightened and where it can be applied and, and how well it can be done depending on multiple different factors. And a lot of them have to do with the individual person. Now, if you have significant stretch marks, if you've had multiple pregnancies, if you've gained and lost a ton of weight, sometimes the bets are all off and you may need to actually cut the skin out. But for those that don't have a significant amount of skin laxity or a significant amount of excess skin, here are some great options to tighten the skin around your belly, even around your knees, your thighs, on your body, your arms, and we're going to go down the whole list. We'll go over all of them and uh, take it from here. Yeah, listen, over the years, uh, the world of skincare has witnessed remarkable innovations, and so we are going to talk about some of the top treatments that we feel will be beneficial. We'll discuss the benefits of the Pico 4 laser, the fractionated CO2 laser, microneedling, uh, the Morpheus 8, and all backed by scientific and clinical data to demonstrate how these treatments can truly transform the skin. I'm going to talk about the Pico 4. Um, the Pico 4 revolution, so this laser has been around for several years, it has two different wavelengths. Uh, one is really to remove pigmentation and to retexturize the skin. The interesting part is one of the wavelengths really has minimal downtime. That's the good part about this. And so you may be red for about 15 minutes. And so, you know, our journey into body toning really begins with this laser only because I feel that it is the least traumatic, meaning it has virtually no downtime. You do have to repeat it on multiple occasions, but this technology essentially harnesses the power of the picosecond laser pulses, okay? Significant advancement from traditional laser treatments. You have to imagine, each laser has a particular chromophore or target. And then, uh, depending on the pulse duration, so we look at the size of the pulse, so that's how wide the laser can hit, and then how deep the laser will go, that's uh, essentially the frequency of the uh, laser, and then we have the pulse duration. Sometimes with an increased pulse duration, so it means it lasts longer, that's when you get heat and inflammation. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get pain. These are fractions of a section, not a, even a nanosecond. We have a picosecond, which is even smaller. And so the pulse duration is so quick that it very rarely causes significant amount of pain. So when we're running it over the face or the body especially, so now let's say along the chest, where you've been wearing a swimming suit and it exposes the decollete or the upper chest portion for years and years and years. You have all these sunspots. This is where you can really target. Along the shoulders, all the way down the arms. And the good part about this laser is that essentially you can do the entire body without causing a true inflammatory reaction, right? We're going to get into some of the laser treatments that will do that. And we have to essentially separate certain areas just to make sure that uh, we don't cause a burn type of reaction uh, in the body. But this is not one of those lasers. So the picosecond laser delivers ultra short bursts of energy. 
It targets unwanted pigmentation, scarring, and even can stimulate some collagen production, depending on what the settings are placed at. So the benefit of this Pico4 laser lies in its ability to effectively treat various skin concerns, including sunspots, age spots, obviously is for pigmentation, and so tattoos are a big part of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that is a bonus with this is that it will remove tattoos. Absolutely. And And just remember, for most of the stuff that we're going to talk about, the least invasive procedures will have the least amount of downtime. So just remember that. And sometimes, you know, no pain, no gain in a sense where, you know, sometimes if it really doesn't have more than a day or two downtime, it's going to take more procedures to get you what you need. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Or we repeat them on multiple intervals. And so, you know, usually I'll say every two weeks you can come in and re uh, undergo the Pico 4. Absolutely. And our studies have shown that the Pico second lasers can lead to faster skin remodeling and has significant reduction in pigmentation compared to to some of the older technologies. So you essentially can hit that pigment, which is its chromophore or target, with less downtime. Because remember, you have to imagine sometimes inflammation leads to pigmentation. Heat can do the same thing. That's why we avoid in some of the darker skin types a certain lasers because we'll cause pigmentation issues if the skin isn't pretreated. This is a laser that can work on all skin types. So it's an option, especially even in darker skin types. I always touted it as good for melasma in the face, but imagine if I can remove the pigmentation or the sunspots from the arms, hands, uh, the thighs, even down by the ankles where we've gotten some more sun exposure, your skin's going to look younger and you'll thank me for it. So. Absolutely. Next one's going to be a what's called a fractional CO2 laser. They used to be, when we were training, we used to actually do the non-fractionated <laughs> CO2 laser, which was the, one of the strongest lasers out there. Mm-hmm. The problem with it was it would leave you with what's called hypopigmentation. You would look super white, <laughs> um, or you can get hyperpigmentation. The fractionated CO2 laser is really in my opinion, probably the best laser for resurfacing. What resurfacing means is, in a sense, just taking off the top layer of the skin, Um, but in a controlled way. So a fractionated treatment means that some areas are treated and some areas aren't. So therefore, you get faster healing, uh, less, less trauma to the skin, and overall, really great collagen production. In our clinical trials and other clinical trials, it's demonstrated that the CO2 laser treatment can improve skin texture, reduce fine lines, and even tighten loose skin. It really is an effective option um, for those that are looking for a little bit of tightening um, without a significant amount of downtime. Now, again, this is just like the Pico in a sense that you can dial it up or dial it down Mm -hmm. and you can make it have more downtime or less downtime. We use this for scars and it works really well. We sometimes use the Pico to leach out um, pigment from scars as well. With that said, most of the time, the fractionated CO2 laser treatment, if done at a very high setting, can be a one and done treatment. I know that you use it a lot at the same time as facelifts and neck lifts Definitely. to resurface the skin and make the skin look as good as the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we've been using it around the belly. The one area that's very concerning to a lot of people is they come and they say, I don't like the wrinkling or the crepiness around my belly button or above my knees Mm -hmm. or the area between my arm and my armpit there's a little skin laxity small areas obviously can be treated more effectively than very large areas if you have a little bit of skin laxity tightening it is a lot easier than if you have a lot of skin laxity the fractionated co2 laser works really well to tighten skin and induces collagen production and can be um, used for a variety of different applications. Yeah, the good part is, especially on the body, when your skin starts looking a little crepey over the arms and shoulders and things like that, especially, you know, those deep creases in between the breasts uh, on on the upper chest, that's where a CO2 laser really can have a great effect. And so you can visually see the skin tightening in front of you. Now, this is where I alluded to earlier that we don't want, you know, it essentially burns a portion of the skin, all right? I'm, I'm oversimplifying it. It does burn a particular target, which is water, but you can cause some damage with this. And the idea is the body will respond. If you were to CO2 laser the entire body, you'd probably go into shock. And so the goal for us is to isolate certain areas or slowly, uh, sequentially hit 
or target different areas of the body. The good part is really, this is kind of one of those one and done lasers. Can you repeat them? Yes, definitely. Um, but it will genuinely cause skin contraction, thickening of the dermis itself just by stimulating collagen formation. And it will also remove some pigmentation. So although there is more downtime, it's a more effective laser to do in one sitting um, as opposed to the Pico 4 where you have to repeat it over and over. Absolutely. Um, and again, it, it can be done under local anesthesia or with some sedation. Mm -hmm. On to the next, microneedling. Listen, uh, this is the collagen booster. It's been around for uh, you know over a decade. The idea behind it is that you have multiple little needles, whether it's in a roller form or on a pen form, that penetrate into a certain layer of the skin, the reticular dermis. Is This is how your body heals. Let's say you were to cut yourself Platelets come to the scene, it stimulates growth factors, and the skin will essentially repair with scar tissue. Um, but it also stimulates collagen. That's what scar is made of. So if you were to isolate with tiny little poke holes from the needles, it will also stimulate collagen. And so it will thicken up the skin and ultimately make you look younger. This procedure gained immense popularity even when Kim Kardashian did something that's called the vampire facial, mm -hmm. all right? And all it meant was that you were creating punctate bleeding all over the face. Then we added to it by adding uh, platelet-rich plasma or PRP. Uh, because ultimately the PRP contains multiple growth factors that will stimulate collagen even at a quicker uh, pace. And numerous clinical studies have shown microneedling can lead to increased collagen and elastin production, uh, resulting in smoother and more youthful looking skin. So now imagine this on the body. Again, we're all going back to the fact that skin starts to thin out. We still have that epidermis, but the dermis, the healthy portion of the skin, is starting to get thinner and thinner. And when you use this to stimulate collagen, if we can thicken up that skin, it causes skin contraction. And that's really what we're looking for. Um, it's particularly effective in, uh, in, in treating injuries like scars, wrinkles, stretch marks. Um, this is one of those things that, you know, there's no perfectly effective treatment for stretch marks, but if we can bring in some normal collagen, you will reduce the appearance of stretch marks. So, Absolutely. Um, on to the next. Morpheus 8 has been, has been probably the most used and, and touted of, of technology that's come out in the last couple of years because it basically takes the best of two worlds, which is microneedling and radio frequency, and it combines them into one, really for one big reason, and it's for collagen production and skin tightening. Now, the first Morpheus 8 that came out was strictly for the face. And what it was, was that the needles were a little bit shorter. The, the millimeter length was shorter, and we used it for face and neck. We used to use it for the body as well. Now there's something called Morpheus Body that is really made for the body. I've seen excellent results. I mean, I've used it on the breast for skin tightening of the breast with breast lifts. We use it together sometimes around the belly button or for any type of non-invasive tightening of the body. We've done full body tightening with Morpheus in a sense before for people who don't want to undergo any type of invasive procedure. The way this works is very similar to microneedling induces injury at the level of the skin that then causes production of collagen, but using heat causes even more stimulation. I think it is a brilliant procedure. It has to do with how much extra skin you have, but if there's not a ton of skin laxity, this works really well. And remember, these procedures are great. They'll work, but they need to be done probably every other year. Mm -hmm. Morpheus, we like to do three times, anywhere between four and eight weeks, somewhere around six weeks apart, um, to continually stimulate that collagen to get as much skin tightening as possible. I think that these are some effective ways. So from the Pico 4 to the CO2 laser, plus microneedling with radio frequency in the form of Morpheus or Morpheus 8, um, these can have phenomenal implications on the skin. We've seen some amazing uh, results based off of these. And when you start seeing your skin is starting to lose that elasticity, I think is a great great time to, to start doing this. Listen, 
The earlier you start, the better, obviously. But once you start noticing a change in your skin texture or quality, that's when you should seek out a, a you know, a board certified plastic surgeon. Um, whether it's a med spa run by a board certified plastic surgeon, the idea is we want an effective uh, and well trained laser technician or or nurse that's going to uh, really take care of you the the appropriate way based off of your skin type. There will be some new technologies on the horizon. This is where we use the plasma technology and things mm-hmm. like that, but those right now are a little more invasive. So we're just sticking to the ones that are going to be a little easier on you. And again, the one thing I said at the beginning of this of this podcast is there is a limitation as to how much these types of modalities are going to tighten skin. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when, what happens is you'll go to a med spa where there isn't a plastic surgeon and then they'll overpromise and underdeliver. So I do say be careful about that because if you've had three kids, you have significant skin laxity of the lower abdomen, nothing is going to fix that other than a tummy tuck. And it's nice to go to a place that knows the difference and knows when to use what and when to have surgery because what ends up happening is you'll spend a ton of money on things and think that you're going to have this perfect tight abdomen. Again, remember, there's limitations to how much can be done. Mm -hmm, Definitely. And also, we know that uh, science and clinical data are guiding us towards very exciting things in skincare, um, but informed decisions are key. And that's why you need to go to a board-certified plastic surgeon that's going to give you their opinion on what would be best. And we always recommend meeting with multiple because, you know, sometimes we'll come up with different options. Not everybody has the same technologies. And so you can glean from that information what's best for you. 